Yo, top of the morning to you wealth champions. Y'all know what it is, man. It is time for the Cortez Hustle Show. I am, of course, your host, Cortez Hustle, everybody's favorite fatherpreneur. Hey, listen, ladies and gentlemen, we have a wonderful, wonderful show in store for you uh, today. So you want to be locked and loaded, as they say. Uh, as we get ready to rock and roll this thing, man, I'm super excited. Uh, Monday is always my favorite day of the week because I've got goals for the rest of the week to accomplish and I can't wait to get started on those things. So uh, do me a favor. If you guys are jumping into the room on Facebook or YouTube, comment in the chat where you're from, drop the name of your business and or your brand. Today, we're going to be talking about internet entrepreneurship. We're going to be talking about news every hustler can use, of course. And then I have a very special guest that I'm going to introduce you guys to. Uh, attorney Thomas H. Clifton is going to share his stories about going from a professional career person to online entrepreneur. And then if you stick around to the end, we're going to talk about three reasons you want to legitimize your side hustle. So let's roll the intro and keep it locked right here. It up, put the hip shit on the shelf Cause the way the real web is being real with self My eyes done seen the glory of the coming of the left I can't do it by myself, so I'm asking for help It's time to switch it up, put the hip shit on the shelf Cause the way the real web is being real with self My eyes done seen the glory of the coming of the left I can't do it by myself, so I'm asking for help Money, money, money That's all you talk about wrong with being wealthy like Kanye West says, having money is not everything. Put the hip shit on the shelf Cause the way the real web is being real with self My eyes done seen the glory of the coming of the left I can't do it by myself, so I'm asking for help It's time to switch it up Put the hip shit on the shelf Cause the way the real web is being real with self My eyes done seen the glory of the coming of the left I can't do it by myself, so I'm asking for help Money, money, money That's all you talk about nothing wrong with being wealthy like Kanye West says, having money is not everything, not having it is. No, Deuteronomy 8, 18 says God gives us the ability to create wealth. No, it's the love of money that's the root of all money. Yes, I do think about all the things in money. I'm just trying to leave a legacy for my Money's not everything, but when you got it, you can do some cool stuff. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Cortez Hustle Show, the business entrepreneurship podcast for hustlers of the 21st century. And uh, I'm ecstatic to be with you each and every Monday and Friday. Don't forget our Friday edition is all about Black economic empowerment. Uh, but Monday, we talk generalities as it relates to entrepreneurship. And your price for admission, ladies and gentlemen, is a simple share. So whether you're hopping on YouTube or Facebook or you are listening to the actual podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeart, wherever you love to get your podcast from, do me a huge favor and share this with the entrepreneurs that you know. Uh, like I said, we're talking uh, internet entrepreneurship and uh, how professionals like our guest uh, that you'll be introduced later today, uh, attorney Thomas H. Clifton, it, they're, you know, even professional people are seeing a way to add another stream of income using uh, internet entrepreneurship and exploring that to the fullest. You guys know our first segment, what we love to do is hop over to news every hustler can use. And of course, today's show is brought to you by Monetize My Life, ladies and gentlemen. This is my best-selling book. You can get a free copy of it if you go to monetizemylifenow.com. It's four incredibly simple ways to turn your passions into profit with little to no start up costs. You do not want to uh, sleep on this power packed publication. Monetizemylifenow.com is where you can grab yourself a copy of that. When we do news, every hustler can use, we typically go over to um, 
Black Enterprise Magazine and see what's going on in the area of business. Hopefully, this information can be used to inspire, uh, inspire encourage, motivate, uplift you, and continue, help you continue on the path of entrepreneurship, man. So many people have these dreams and these goals. In fact, Dr. Dennis Kimbrell says every single one of us is given at least four ideas every year that if we only pursue them with persistence and perseverance would turn us into millionaires. Every year we get at least four ideas, but sometimes we don't know how to do that. So I want to show with, share with you some uh, articles and some inspirational stuff from entrepreneurs all over the globe. So let's take a look at what's going on in the world of business. And according to Black Enterprise Magazine, uh, let's see what they have today. It says, don't miss these stories. Exclusive Cash Money co-founder Slim and business manager Vernon Brown on partnering with New Orleans mayor to pay rents amid this COVID situation. Ladies and gentlemen, I try to tell everybody that I come across, having money is not everything. I know that, y'all heard that in the intro. Having money is not everything, but when you do have it, you can do some cool stuff like pay people's rent for them while they are out of work. U.S. jobless claims continue to rise past 40 million people have filed for unemployment, ladies and gentlemen. There's huge amounts of opportunity here. If you are in, like I am, the home-based business arena, the network marketing space, uh, the direct sales, affiliate marketing space, internet entrepreneurship, people are out of work, ladies and gentlemen. And while there are a lot of people just milking unemployment for as long as they can, trust and believe, man, Serious people who are raising families, who are trying to build legacies, they know that they've got to do something and they're doing it now. They're not trying to milk unemployment. And those people, you need to be getting your opportunity in front of so that you can help them build some extra income. Uh, Fannie Mae launches here to help education effort. Uh, let's see. Uh, Republicans open to back to work bonuses for unemployed workers. Huh, more money. Listen, I want you guys to understand something, man. I love a government that's trying to help its employees, uh, its, its uh, constituents out in rough times. But I also know our government is a capitalistic economy, meaning we going to pay all of this money that they're giving away. We're going to pay it back via taxes. So don't be fooled by that. And the one way to avoid being overtaxed is to be in business for yourself. Uh, I like this story. Another story of inspiration from the trap to Wall Street. Leon Howard is using the knowledge he gained behind bars to help others attain financial independence, ladies and gentlemen. Listen, your story, that this is the why I wrote the book, Monetize My Life. Your story, your experience, your expertise, your uh, gifts, your talents, your passions, they can help people. And if you properly package and present them to the marketplace, could be a game changer for you financially. And this is what this young man is doing. Uh, I love to see stories like this. Uh, employers struggle to compete with federal unemployment payments. This article, it, it, it cracks me up, but that's where we are. And could that all be part of a larger sinister plan that we're not paying attention? Listen, they're giving away so much money and unemployment benefits right now that people are making more money from unemployment than they do if they have a job. So they're not going back to work until their unemployment is exhausted. Did our government know? Did they foresee that this was going to happen? And did they strategically set unemployment benefits uh, at such a 
a lucrative amount, knowing that this will cripple small businesses, knowing that this would uh, cause this sort of uh, uh, rebellion from employees who are making uh, minimum wage and a little bit more, because trust me, minimum wage ain't paying you $900 per week, like a lot of people are getting uh, in their unemployment benefits, right? So they have more income now from unemployment checks than they would if they go back to work. Therefore, a lot of companies are struggling right now trying to get those people to come back to work. So uh, that that there's more and more opportunity out there, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so for those people who struggle to find work, you should now be able to find work because if people are not going back to work, that means these companies have to hire and fill these slots. So that could be a good thing and a bad thing. Also, I wanted to share this one with you guys really quickly as well. Uh, Forbes has done this article, 75 black owned businesses to support. Uh, I think this is pretty dope. Um, Voting with your pocketbook is one of the best ways to affect change in a capitalistic society. I agree wholeheartedly. The U.S. boasts uh, roughly 2.5 million Black-owned businesses, according to the Census Bureau. I think that is dope. And they give a little write-up on the top 10, and then they also list the other 65 and just text with links to uh, these companies' websites. So, uh, that's pretty amazing that they have, uh, they're showing love to black owned businesses in this regard. So, uh, if you want to buy black, then definitely go check out the Forbes article and it lists 75 black owned businesses that you can support. And a lot of times when you go and start supporting these black owned businesses, you can very clearly see other black owned businesses that they are connected with and you can expand your uh, ability to shop with more and more black owned businesses. Uh, also news that every hustler can use, ladies and gentlemen, I wanna read to you an excerpt from uh, this book, The Principles and Power of Vision. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are trying to be an entrepreneur without vision, Y'all know what the good book says about people without vision, right? It's two reasons people perish, lack of vision and lack of knowledge. And the people who don't even know they need a vision, what do you think are happening to them, right? Um, I want to encourage somebody this morning, man, that you are created with a special design, right? And uh, Dr. Miles Monroe writes here, born to be known for something. Every human being was created to accomplish something specific that no one else can accomplish. It is crucial for you to understand this truth. You are designed to be known for something special. You are meant to do something that will make you unforgettable. You were born to do something that the world will not be able to ignore. You were born to do something that the world will not be able to ignore. But here's the challenge you're going to face, ladies and gentlemen. If you are spending any amount of time trying to be anything other than your authentic self, you will never do the thing that you were designed to be because you're trying to be something that you're not. On the other side of this break, man, I'm gonna introduce you guys to uh, my good buddy, Thomas H. Clifton. He's an attorney and internet entrepreneur. And man, when I tell you that this is a powerful, powerful brother helping people all over the country explode and expand businesses, create businesses using his business brand blueprint, it, it, you guys do not want to miss this. So keep it locked right here and we'll see you on the other side of the break. The Cortez Hustle Show is brought to you by Financial Health Mentor, practical, proven wealth building strategies specifically for working class Americans. 
Go to financialhealthmembership.com. Learn how to get your taxes down, credit up, get out of debt, and start accumulating assets. Financialhealthmembership.com. Cortez Hustle Show is also brought to you by freefunnelmachine.com. If you've ever wanted to use sales funnels in your business, but not quite ready to fork over hundreds of dollars per month for funnel building software, then now you can incorporate sales funnels into your process absolutely free. Freefunnelmachine.com includes free autoresponder, includes free training, and it is free for life. Freefunnelmachine.com. Of course, this hustle show is also brought to you by Office Puddle Print Shop. All of the graphic designs, logos that you see for iHustle Media Group and the Cortez Hustle Show are courtesy of Office Huddle Print Shop. Check out their exclusive unlimited graphics package at officehuddleprints.com. The Cortez Hustle Show is a copyright production of iHustle Media Group. Any unauthorized use of video, captions, audio, depiction of this show is strictly prohibited. I hope for media group, a better way to market. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Cortez Hustle Show. I'm, of course, your host, Cortez Hustle, and we're coming live and direct from the Monetize My Life studios here in St. Louis, Missouri. Listen, if you have a gift, skill, talent, special ability, expertise, or know-how that you have yet to monetize, then you need to go over to monetizemylifenow.com, grab your free copy of the book, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, it's yours free. All you do is cover shipping, and we'll get it right out to you. It'll show you the four incredibly simple ways to turn any passion into profit. Uh, speaking of turning passions into profit, my next guest, man, has done just that. And I want to let you guys hear from a good friend of mine. He's an attorney and internet entrepreneur. So go figure. And we're going to talk about how those things came to be. So uh, some of you guys may know this guy, some of you guys may not. But Mr. Thomas H. Clifton, really quickly, man, tell everybody who you are and how the heck you go from attorney to internet entrepreneur. Hey guys, well, just like my brother just told you, I am a, an attorney, business coach and consultant and just serial entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. I grew up dirt poor, just like brother Cortez and um, notice of 10, man. And I had to learn how to hustle at an early age. So one of the things I saw in my community was that the attorneys were the people who seemed to control all of the wealth. They controlled all the real estate and they were in on almost everything. Mm -hmm. Not to mention my, you know, my, my mother, when I was younger, was charged with a crime she didn't commit. And it really lit a passion in me watching her lawyer fight to get the charges dismissed. And then of course, later on in life, he became one of my mentors. So in any event, back in the early 2000s, when I started practicing law, I think about like 2001, I did a couple of years as, as an assistant DA here in North Carolina and really saw I was busting my hump working, but I wasn't getting anywhere. Mm -hmm. The people in private practice seemed to be making all the money. So to make a long story short, I did something most people considered crazy. Mm -hmm. I quit my job after I got an $8,000 raise and started my own business. And wow. I never, I never forget, bro. One of my closest colleagues told me, she was like, look, you know, you've got a um, beautiful family. You've got, uh, beautiful wife and you're you know really smart you work really hard thomas but she said look there are no black attorneys in this town and we haven't been able to keep a black attorney in this town and she said i'm just afraid that you're going to jump out there and you're going to start this business and you and your business are going to fail and you and your family will starve mm. brother cortez that's been over 18 years ago do i look like i missed any meal <laughs> hey man um and, and and what's funny about that uh brother thomas is she honestly thought she was looking out for you. She and did. Oftentimes, that's what we run into. People who love us, people who care for us. Uh, with some, some do it consciously, but most do it unconsciously, and they project their fears onto other people. What was it about what you had seen uh, beyond just, you know, the monetary uh, aspect, and you saw a lane for yourself, but what gave you the courage to say, you know, despite someone who loves and cares for me, uh, giving me some somewhat of a negative feedback on the decision I'm about to make, what, what gave you the courage to, to, to go through with it? First and foremost, faith. I mean, you're looking at somebody, brother, the way I grew up, we grew up without any 
plumbing up until the point when I was a uh, senior in high school. Hmm. We didn't have a we didn't have a bathroom. We had a bucket or an outhouse, and my job every day was to carry that bucket out the house since I was seven years old. Right. To get out of that, I went to work in the tobacco fields, the cucumber fields, the chicken houses, the hog houses, you name it, I did it. Mm -hmm. So I knew the stink of hard work with little reward. And don't get me wrong, I enjoyed being a prosecutor. It was a great experience because I had access to all types, all the resources of the state. I had the power of the state behind me, and my boss gave me wide latitude. I could try. I tried everything from traffic tickets to murder cases. Wow. In a very short period of time, I got a, a lot of authority invested in me. But what I found was that I was working myself to death. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it just didn't seem like I was getting anywhere. And so me being the person I was, I, I did a little investigation, find out that I was being grossly underpaid. Wow. But I never had my, my dream was to never work for anybody again when I left law school. And I really started up fresh out of law school in the very beginning. For about eight months, I had my own law practice, just me and the good Lord, no secretary, just me, a computer, the good Lord, and a willingness to fight. Right. And that parlayed into an opportunity to become an, uh, an assistant district attorney. And I turned that opportunity down a couple of times and mm -hmm. had my mentor and a couple of other black lawyers and a uh, black state senator, they all you know, kind of pushed me toward doing it. And so I did it. Well, the number one thing was my faith growing up faith took me from the outhouse to the courthouse gotcha. so when it got to that point where i realized that if i wanted to get my family to a place where they could enjoy the type of lifestyle i thought they deserved we were still living at that point in a cramped double wide trailer and it's nothing wrong with a double wide a double wide was a mansion compared to what to the way i grew up mm -hmm. but i had a growing family and we had more needs and I just looked around and said, you know what? I can't get done here what I need to do. Mm -hmm. And I confronted my boss several times about getting a raise. You know, he lied to me point blank a few times until I actually did the research and got his budget, confronted him with it, and literally shocked the living crap out of him. <laughs> wow. <laughs> when I did that, you know, it was like, okay, I'm, I'm going to make a concession. What can I do? And I, I knew the numbers when I went in. Mm -hmm. He claimed he didn't have money, but he had about $10,000 that he could play with in the budget. He could only give me up to $8,000 because of the short time period I'd been working, and he could only give me a raise in $2,000 increments. For right. So for four months straight, I got a $2,000 raise, then I quit my job. Oh. <laughs> wow. And when I did, I didn't have you know a bunch of money stacked up or anything like that. I just jumped out there and I said, Lord, you've mm -hmm. always took care of me. You're going to take care of me now. One thing I realized that the more fearful I am about doing something, the more I really need to get up and do it. Yeah, yeah. And so that's what kind of precipitated that whole thing. It was really faith more than anything else that led me to take that first step. Once I took that first step, it was like God had a ready-made practice for me. Mm -hmm. Even though I'd been prosecuting, there were so many people that, it, that were impressed with what they saw in me. And it wasn't that I was such a great trial lawyer. It was just that I, I cared. I'd fight. Mm -hmm. And that's what they were looking for. Gotcha, man. I, I love that because that's, you know, that people underestimate the power of passion and giving it a hundred percent, whatever it is that you're doing. And I'm sure you had a, a fire burning in you that said you was going to go your own way anyway. But even beforehand, like you said, people saw uh, someone who's very determined, someone who was convicted with uh, what he was doing and trying to get the determined outcome, you know, at all costs. And, and I think that's special. So many people want to cut corners and, and want to do things halfway. And you just can't build, you can't even build a sustainable career that way, let alone a business. So when you went to private practice, what were some of the things that you learned about entrepreneurship early on that you could tell someone who is kind of <laughs> in that same boat that says, you know what? I'm ready to jump, but I'm scared. Uh, I'm ready to jump if I had, you know, a few pointers, maybe that would push me over the edge. So what would you say you learned about entrepreneurship in those first, uh, you know, 18, 24 months or so? First and foremost, let me do this. I'm not telling anybody to go quit their job today. I was in a position where I couldn't start a law practice while I still worked for the state as a prosecutor. So I was kind of forced to do it. But let's be honest, I would have did it either way. <laughs> right. I never wanted the job anyway. But right. for, for, from the from the get go, the first thing is if you sit back and wait for the perfect time to do it, 
that time will never come. Mm. Honestly, I should have quit six months before I really did. Gotcha. And started my, you know, and started up. So don't sit back and wait. If you've got the desire, you've got the idea, you've got the, the skills and the tool set, you're going to have to take a leap of faith at some point. There will never be the perfect day or time to start your business. That doesn't exist. Yeah. Yeah, that's huge, man. And and so many people, when the kids graduate, uh, when my husband gets a second job or when my husband starts working so much overtime, there's always a reason that says you're going to put it off and you're going to look up and be 70, 80 years old, still talking about what you should have, could have, would have done. But uh, when we come back on the other side of this break, we're going to talk about the transition to adding another stream of income by leveraging the internet, ladies and gentlemen. And again, you don't have to stop doing what you're doing to add to it. And that's what Brother Clifton uh, Thomas did is add it to and was able to use the Internet to do so. So we're going to come back and talk about how he transitioned from uh, attorney to Internet entrepreneur. So keep it locked right here. I have done two prior Young Jeffy Better Health Now Challenges. I decided this time around I needed an extra push. A good thing to remember is 32 pounds is the weight of my three and a half year old son, and I am not carrying around a, a three and a half year old, basically. I'm a mother of four. I just want to want to see how healthy I can get so that I can be around for a while. It's pretty amazing whenever you're excited to get on the scales every morning and see what the numbers are instead of dreading it. When I went to convention last year, the day of the 5K, when this lady Merle came across the finish line, it, she was visually impaired, she was blind. From this day forth, I said, I'm, I'm changing my lifestyle, and I'm just gonna be a whole new me. I was out of control. I really let myself go. And I thought, okay, who loses 12 pounds in a week? I'm like, this is such a joke. But it happened, and it happened again, and again, and again. Anybody can do this. If I can do it, you can do it. Leading up to today has been a whirlwind, but I feel amazing. Everybody makes you feel really awesome when you come here too, so it just kind of like heightens your excitement about everything. I feel so much better. If I could help just one person be able to do that for their life, then it'd be worth it all. I feel amazing. I can't believe how far I've came from last year to this year. I have kept my weight off within two to five pounds, which is a complete miracle. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Cortez Hustle Show. And we are live and direct from the freefunnelmachine.com studios here in St. Louis, Missouri. Listen, if you are not using sales funnels in your business, you are working too hard, my friend. A sales funnel simply gives your client, your prospect, a guided way to purchase your products, services, and it makes it very easy for them to get exactly what they need so that they don't have to think twice about it. Go to freefunnelmachine.com. You can set up a free sales funnel, comes with a free autoresponder, and uh, at least test it out and see if it can help you improve your efficiencies in business. Speaking of sales funnels and the internet and all things online, brother Thomas Clifton went from, now don't get me wrong, he's still an attorney, but he added to his um, income streams, internet entrepreneurship. So what happened, uh, Thomas, that an attorney finds the time to start poking around online to say, hey, you know what, there might be something here. Was there a major event that happened or was that something that you were always intrigued with? There was a major event, but there was also a cumulative effect. Um, as we were talking about me, you know, starting my own law practice over the, I think it was the next 10, 12 years, I built multiple practices, two with partners and basically one on my own. And the first one, the partnership ended, we're, you know, me and my partner are still good friends to this day, but the partnership ended on a bad note. Yeah. And it, we made a lot of mistakes as two young lawyers that cost us a lot of money, just point blank. Mm -hmm. And so we learned a lot of lessons. We learned lessons about taxes and how to make sure that you're doing estimate, that you're paying estimated taxes if you are essentially in business for yourself. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I think most people call it self-employed. The other thing is don't be self-employed. We mm -hmm. structured our business as a uh, professional limited liability company so that we could take advantage of, you know, all the tax advantages and the perks that come along with having a structured business, plus the limited liability. And 
We've talked about that before. We'll do a spe- we can do a special segment on that someday right. because that's really <laughs> important, yes. really really important. But over the next 10, 12 years, man, I was really hustling. You know, I, I we made a ton of money in the beginning, and we just we were out there trying to prove to people, me and my first partner, hey, we know what we're doing. Mm-hmm. And we did, and we made a lot of money in the process, but we never even looked at the fact of how much money we were making. So we, we paid a lot of money out to the government. Mm-hmm. Another, another good point, when you're in business, have a plan for your money, because if you don't, everyone else does have a plan for your money. Right. Starting with your Uncle Sam and your Aunt Iris. <laughs> right. they, they both have very big plans for your money. The other thing is, as time goes on, have a plan for your business. Um, I talked about me and my partner dissolving. We didn't have an exit strategy for the business. That's Mm -hmm. very important. So over the years, I learned that you start with your exit strategy. Mm -hmm. And so these were the types of lessons I learned over the years. And I started sharing them with other people. And I spent a lot of time really delving into small business practice, helping people get businesses set up. And my practice took off. Um, It got to a point, man, I had a large staff. I had two offices. I had a staff of about eight, nine people. Had an extra attorney working for me and stuff, and we're just hustling, hustling, hustling. And I had so many clients that I was spending nights and weekends working, Mm -hmm. trying to see my clients because I've got this thing with me where if I represent you, I'm going to give you the full benefit of my attention Mm -hmm. that you deserve. I work for you. Cortez, it was wearing me out, man. I mean, my, my weight skyrocketed. I'm still, you know, fighting this weight battle now, but all of a sudden I developed severe high blood pressure, mm-hmm. um, sleep apnea, and a bunch of other things. I was neglecting myself because I had turned into a human doing instead of a human being. And so as that progressed, I just couldn't say no, couldn't say no. Stuff kept piling up, man. I, I think the low point for me was I spent New Year, I brought the new year in one year with a client that I couldn't stand at the magistrate's <laughs> office away from my family. Wow. And it was like, when I got back, you know, home that night and I'd missed everything and my babies were already sleeping, I'd missed everything. And I felt, man, I felt cheap enough to be sold for a penny. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd made a nice little chunk of money, a few, you know, four or $5,000 in a short period of time, but the money can't replace what I miss with my kids. I'm, you know, man, I ain't gonna lie. I'm getting teary eyed now. You know, my eyes are kind of welling up now because I can't go back and get that time back. Get it back. That's right. And so here I am, I'm just working and working we're making money i bought you know a house bought you know bought bought a home this home i'm sitting in now you know Mm -hmm. was in the process of buying this home had bought a building i'd seen you know my fortune go up my fortune go down then it came all the way god was really blessing me to climb once again Mm -hmm. but it was something missing i felt empty as crap on the inside yeah and um, I never forget my, my my favorite daughter in the whole wide world, Rakaya, who's my only daughter in the whole wide world. <laughs> she reached out to my mother and she told my mother, she said, I'm worried about my daddy, grandma. He worked so hard. And, you know, she, the little thing, she had tears in her eyes. She said, but he, he can't tell people no. People bother him when we're at the restaurant. People bother him, you know, when we're at ball games. And he, he can never say no. And I can't. I'm the world's worst at that. Yeah. And um, it just got to a point I couldn't sleep at night. And I never forget, my mother called me out of the blue. Now, my mom was the one that pushed me harder than anybody else in my life. And she's the reason I went to law school. Mm -hmm. Watching her get arrested for a crime she didn't commit, be persecuted for something she didn't do, and then watching the young black lawyer that came in and championed in her case and getting it thrown out, that left a mark on me. I told her, you know, I was going to beat up the people that, you know, that took her away from us. And she taught me at an early age, no, you fight with your mind. Mm-hmm. That's how we're going to win. So she pushed me. My building, my office sits right across the street from the building she was locked up in. I practiced in the same court that she was prosecuted in. Wow. I worked in the same DA's office that she was prosecuted in. I work around the same prosecutor that prosecuted her. Wow. So this was God bringing me full circle mm-hmm. in the fight. So I'm doing my thing. Then all of a sudden, the number one person in my life who had pushed me harder than anybody else called me and said, son, you need to step away from your law practice. Mm. And I switched off my mama and she (laughs) said, it's time for you to let it go. And I kind of shrugged my shoulders and brushed her off and said, "Um, nah, damn mama, you know, what are you talking about? She said, son, I'll never forget, this is what she told me. She said, son, God's got bigger plans for you than you have for yourself. She said, "Um, you're killing yourself doing what you're doing. You've put up the fight. You've helped a lot of folks, but it's time to really focus on the bigger picture. And I said, well, mom, I, I thought she was talking about me being a judge or, or elected mm-hmm. DA or something like that. And I'm like, mom, I don't want to do that stuff. I'm good where I am. I kind of settled into 
hey, I'm going to practice law for the rest of my life. This is what I'm going to do. I'll make a lot of money, you know, tell a few jokes in court, fight the good fight. You know, that's the whole thing. And that's just it. That's 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 the way to life. I got boats and cars and all the other crap we buy. I got a house and all this stuff in a gated community with, you know, view overlooking the golf course, private lake, tennis courts. All, you know, I'm, I'm living the American dream. Right. The only problem is my dream was turned into a nightmare. My blood pressure was so high, the doctor was afraid to even let me walk out of the um, the uh, doctor's office the day that I really had to face reality. Hmm. Well, I'm going through all this stuff, Cortez, and um, I never forget. I, you know, I kind of brushed my mouth and I told us, "Mama, we're moving the house in about two weeks." Now, I grew up. I grew up in a shack, no mm-hmm. indoor plumbing, outhouse for a bathroom or a bucket. You know, a bucket in the corner. That's what we had until I was a senior in high school. Mm-hmm. My job was to carry that bucket, man. So I knew the stink. I knew the. You know, I can still smell it and taste it right now. Mm-hmm. So I'm. This is what I'm fighting. My mother tells me, you know, let it go. You know, it's time to 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 let it go. And I'm like, nah, mom, I'm making too much money. This, that, and the other. Look, we'll talk about it. When I when we move into the house, come by the house and we're gonna sit on the back deck. We're gonna laugh at the people playing golf, sip some Picardy rum, and giggle our asses off, pardon my language. Mm-hmm. Well, the day comes to that, you know, we were about two weeks away from moving. And mama, you know, she kind of tabled it. She said, Okay, son, we'll do that. And um, this, you know, no lie. She, um, the day we moved in, you know, I'm frantic. I'm get all over the place, getting stuff in place. I wanted it to be perfect for my mama because we never had a home growing up. And she always preached home ownership. Right. That was the biggest thing in the world to her. And so about five o'clock, I laid back. I've got a uh, recliner in my, in my living room. I kind of laid back in the recri- recliner and took a deep breath. Exhale. Phone rings. It's my sister. I'm like, okay, they're outside in the yard. I know and mama, they're probably up at the gate. I want to make sure that everything's okay to come back here. So I get on the phone and my sister says, Tom, we're on the way to the hospital. Mm. We think Mama had a stroke. Wow. And um, that day we lost my mother. She's 54 years old. Wow. Man, so sorry to hear that, man. And man, um, last words. I mean, I had two weeks I could have talked to my mother. Mm-hmm. I had two weeks, Cortez. I can never go back and get that time back. Now I was busy in court. I was busy trying to move into the new home so I could show it off to her and impress her. I was busy doing all these things. Mm-hmm. And I never got a chance to tell her again. It's it's an indelible mark in my mind walking into the hospital and seeing her hooked up to the machines. Her eyes were open, but my mother was not there. Wow. And I remember walking up to her and whispering in her ear, Mama, your oldest son is here. And um, I just promised her, so I, I won't forget. And so, you know, we lost her that night going into the next morning. 54 years old, she died of a massive stroke. Wow. And for two weeks, not no, excuse me, for two months, I can't remember what happened. The only thing I remember is I, I could never sit in that chair in my living room. I still don't sit in that chair. Mm-hmm. The other thing was I remember just being at home. I remember my, my paralegal calling at one point and talking to my wife and, to, and she just she was like, Tom, you got to snap out of it. It's been two months, you know, you, we've got all this stuff going on at the office, some stuff we can't do without, you've got to be here. Mm-hmm. And it was a part, you know, a part inside of me that said, I don't want to be there, you know, and I had to really dust it, dust everything off. I get up and I dust myself off and um, my mind starts coming back to me. And so I start looking through things and, you know, of course it's going on two and a half months now. My mother's been gone, but something told me to check my email. So I'm checking my email and I found the last email that my mother sent me. She had um, changed her email address for whatever reason. And I never forget, I looked at the email and she had sent me the email, let me know she changed her, her email address, mm-hmm. it changed her email address to lovefreedom at gmail.com. Love freedom. Wow. And it hit me like a ton of bricks. Hmm. Mama was telling me it was time to be free. Yeah. She had told me, she said, son, you've been fighting so hard to get somewhere in life. You didn't enjoy the process. It's time for you to enjoy life. You've got everything that you really need. And God has a bigger platform for you to step into. Now, did I know that was the internet? The, the internet? No. <laughs> but when I kind of delved into that and I saw how everything was working with the online funnels and stuff like that, it made sense because I had literally taken an unconventional approach in building my law practice. Mm -hmm. I use direct mail and direct response marketing to build a huge 
clientele really quickly. And so when I saw the online portion work, online marketing is based on the direct response marketing. It's, it's the same thing. It's just in and of itself. It. It's so so when, that's right. So when I saw it, it was like that moment in the matrix when Neo finally realizes this is it. Mm -hmm. I'm the one. Got and it. that started the journey. I Man, I jumped, so many things fell in place. And I jumped out there, started a podcast, and I met people who were able to help me along the way. Mm -hmm. What happened was... I was taught, you know, I, I reached out to a mentor and he taught me how to take what I, what I was already doing, which was coaching and consulting and helping people build businesses mm -hmm. and add the online portion to that so that they could build them from home mm -hmm. and build them with low overhead. Gotcha. And so that bred, you know, the business branding blueprint. All right. All right. Listen, uh, when we come back on the other side of this break, man, Thomas is going to tell you guys how you can get your hands on that business branding blueprint and uh, also some other things that he's got going on in the online marketing space. So keep it locked right here. Quarter Dance Hustle Show is also brought to you by FreeFunnelMachine.com. If you've ever wanted to use sales funnels in your business, but not quite ready to fork over hundreds of dollars per month for funnel building software, then now you can incorporate sales funnels into your process absolutely free. FreeFunnelMachine.com includes free autoresponder, includes free training, and it is free for life. FreeFunnelMachine.com. The course of the show is also brought to you by Office Puddle Print Shop. All of the graphic designs, logos that you see for iHustle Media Group and the Cortez Hustle Show are courtesy of Office Huddle Print Shop. Check out their exclusive unlimited graphics package at OfficeHuddlePrints.com. The Cortez Hustle Show is a copyrighted production of iHustle Media Group. Any unauthorized use of the video, caption, audio, depiction of this show is strictly prohibited. I'm also media group, a better way to market. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Cortez Hustle Show. Did I tell y'all I had a dynamic show for you guys today? Uh, Brother Thomas Clifton is uh, an amazing guy. Uh, so he made the transition to adding the online piece to what he was already doing offline, having so much success, and now he has a business building blueprint available. So talk a little bit about that. What are some of the building blocks of a solid business, whether you're doing it online, but in particular, those who are building it from home and what's included in that blueprint? Well, the blueprint in and of itself is the process that I personally use to build my businesses, whether online or brick and mortar. Mm -hmm. And essentially, I take you know my, my students or my clients through that process and help them take their passions, their hobbies, their interests, and transform them into a wildly profitable business that they'll absolutely love so they can finally, you know, make enough money to quit their nine to five jobs and break free from the everyday nine to five grind. That's, you know, that's the whole thing. Yeah. And, and what, the, what, the, what that entails is my online academy where I teach the basics, but also the coaching and consulting component where I give direct feedback and help kind of hold their hand and walk them through the process step by step. Yeah. And that's amazing, man, because I, I know some people, or a little apprehensive about jumping out. Not as bold as you and I, because I kind of made that same jump, man. I didn't have no, I didn't have money stacked to the side. I just went in one day and uh, I came home. I went in at nine and I was out of there at about 9.30 the day I left my job, man. It, it, I, I was already the type of guy that don't, didn't have a whole lot of family pictures and stuff up. I literally held the trash can at the end of my desk and did one of these numbers. <laughs> That's what's here. up. So uh, everybody is not that bold, man, but uh, really you talked about, you know, your mom changing her email address to love freedom. Talk about, you know, how, why it's so important for you to help people get to that freedom. Cortez, you and I believe in this very strongly. And I want to say, I appreciate the work that you do whether it's through Monetize My Life, Cortez Hustle, all the other, all the various ventures, even what you're doing in the network marketing industry. Because the, the, the common denominator is we don't get the information and we also don't have access to the coaching, the mentoring, the consulting, those things that help you, that will help aspiring entrepreneurs actually fill in the gaps. Yeah, The, yeah. the information's out there. 
-hmm. you know, information is a dime a dozen on the internet. You can find almost anything that you're looking for if you've got enough time to find it, but you don't know how to use it. Um, Education to me is a tool. Mm -hmm. And it's just like somebody, I I can go out and buy a brand new chainsaw right now, but if I don't know how to use it or if I put it in the wrong hands, it becomes deadly. So people like yourself, people like me, what we see is that, okay, I've had the opportunity. I've been blessed to be in, in, in the middle of conversations. When I was an assistant DA, you know, I, I'm in a good old boy town. So when people would come to me to get the good old boys come to me looking for help on a traffic ticket for a good client or whatever case I could do it in, I'd hold them hostage. I'm like, okay, let's go to lunch. And while they're, you know, begging me to help them, I'm picking their brains about how do you set up a business? Mm-hmm. You know, how do you set up a trust? All these things, uh, infinite banking, all these things mm-hmm. that we've never had access to, I'm learning. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going back and I'm sharing them, I'm teaching them. So that part of it for me, that's what gets me passionate, man. This is, yeah. you know, this, this is what my passion is, is seeing my clients win, seeing my students win, seeing my brothers and sisters win. Yeah. Because I'm a firm believer. There's enough business out there for all of us. So yeah. why wouldn't I teach you what I know? That's it, man. That's it. And 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 the power in us being financially stable enough to really pursue the things that we love, enjoy, and that are we're, we're passionate about. I mean, a lot of times we don't even pursue the things that we're passionate about because we can't figure out how to make them put food on the table. But the minute you get money as an issue out of the way, and I'm looking at my sons right now and I'm thinking, man, the next few years, y'all can just really double down on whatever it is that your heart desires. And Amen. you don't have to worry about chasing a dollar. So, uh, Thomas, it's been a pleasure, man. Tell everybody what they need to do to get a hold of that blueprint, brother. Well, first and foremost, you can reach out to me at helpmebreakfree.com. And mm-hmm. I've got a, a special gift just for you. And just check the video out and sign up for a coaching call, man. And we'll sit down and talk about what it takes to work together. And if it's a good fit, I might, you know, make an offer to you. If it's not, then cool. I'll try to lead you in the right direction because when it boils down to it, I want to see you break free. I want to see you get out there, like Cortez said, just said, and have the freedom to really stop and enjoy life. You know, jobs are fine. Jobs are like a tool. You know, it, it's, you know, it's, it, it, it's a good tool to have, but, I said this before, Cortez, if you don't mind, I'm going to say it again, bro. There's mm-hmm. no such thing as a good job. <laughs> so keep that in mind. Number one, you don't own it. Number That's two, right. you're never going to be paid what you're worth on a job. Number three, you can't pass it down to your family. And I think we're all seeing this right now in the middle of this pandemic. Mm-hmm. It can be taken away from you at any time. That's so right. what's so damn good about that? <laughs> you are absolutely right. It's been a pleasure, my friend. When we come back, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to continue our discussion on the benefits of legitimizing your business. I know you think that side hustle is good and you think making a few thousand dollars cash under the table and paying no taxes is good. But what if I told you you were leaving tens of thousands of dollars on the table? We're going to talk about that when we come back.